And Karma says, Jay-Z got to back that statement up. I agree. That's what I said at the beginning okay. of the broadcast. Uh, hold on. Big Ten says, industry has carried Jay-Z. I think that's legit. I well, think that well, is okay. legit. Well, that kind of goes to what I'm saying. See, what has happened is, is that he has gotten out of the machine and gotten older. He's gotten drawn back in the pack. And now that you're back in the pack, let's just kind of put you back on the scale and start weighing you again. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because we've always kind of weighed him on the scale of like how we viewed him when he was at that peak and how he left it. Nobody else has really gotten that kind of credence or that kind of treatment. You get what well, I'm you saying? Know, the other part of that is, too, is over the past 10 years, there hasn't been anybody around to grab from. Like, there's no... Um, there's no Jazzo around. There's no Sauce Money around. There's no Camp Low around. There's no State Property, Young Chris. There's no Kanye to grab from. There's no J. Cole to grab from. And we're seeing that all these, like you said, you're looking back at the catalog now, it's like, okay, this was very collaborative heavy. I think that's why we really loved American Gangsta. And I love American Gangsta. I think it was a breath of fresh air, especially after he did Kingdom Come. But... The hits aren't there. I think Kingdom Come 2 is another one where we saw for the first time Jay is doing these hooks and the songs were coming out flat. Show me what you got. He's doing the hooks now. And he wasn't doing the hooks like that before. And if so, he did do it, he was doing it in conjunction with like, you know, a UGK flow, got UGK on it, or doing like a Money Cash Hoes with... Uh, DMX barking in the back, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, so Mike, I'm other artists have been able to do Mike. that though. I mean, <laughs> I, I just want to finish the thought though. Like, T, right. I got what you know, right? People go to Wayne for hooks, you know what I mean? Like, Wayne got Red Nation, um, Kanye, countless of records where Duffel he's bag able to boy, hold it Mike. down. Duffel bag, bag boy. boy, Kanye can do Can't Tell Me Nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, but. He hasn't proven that all around he's anything outside of a dope lyricist that's dope enough to be able to adjust to a lot of things. But when it comes to making a full song, it seems like he's had a lot of help with that. And I think that's why Future said what he said. So, Mike, can I tell you why I think that help comes into play? And it goes to some things that we always talk about. Well, Mike. The reason that it's collaborative heavy, in my opinion, is because of something that, once again, I've been saying about him for a long, long time. Well, of all the guys in this stratosphere, Mike, he has the worst voice. He knows that. He said that before. And I right. agree with that. He doesn't have a Biggie, Rakim, Nas, Method Man, Ice Cube, Chuck D, KR. No, his voice isn't like that. LL Mike, Cool J. LL Cool J. Mike, you know what helps you forget that? When you're not carrying the weight of the song so much all the time. Yeah. Right. I mean, but again, oh, so, like you said, so, show me so what you got know. showed us. Like with him on the hook for show me what you got, that showed us like, oh, his voice can't really carry a hook like that. Money ain't a thing. That's Jermaine Dupri. Mike, listen to the listen to the songs. Like, listen to the songs before he had major help, the singles. That's why I started at the top. Mike can't knock the hustle. Who's singing the hook? Mary. Ain't no nigga. Fox. Mike. Jazz. People. Yeah. Mike. Hard Knock Life. Annie. Mike. Nigga what nigga who? Emil. Mike. Who's on the background in Money Cash Hoes? X. I was going to say another one. Uh, Mike, can can I get her? It's Ja Rule. Mike, can I get her? Do it again. Mike. All these hits got people on the hook. Even that do it again. Remember that was stolen That's from that one group. Remember, Emil's yeah, on Mike, there too. But yeah, but, Emil's, but Mike, Emil's still on the hook. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying even the words from Do It Again that was stolen. Remember, he Mike, got that lawsuit from that. Mike, Big Pimpin'. That's Bun B on the hook, Mike. Yeah, and the it's flow like, is Pimp it's C. It's been like this. It's yeah. been like this. Excuse Mike. me, Miss Young Chris did that before they stole it from Luther. You know what I mean? Mike. Oh, me and my girlfriend. That's Tupac. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde 03, I mean. 03, That's what Bonnie I'm saying. So, Mike, you want to know why that is, though? Because his rap voice isn't as strong. Give it to me. That's Pharrell, Oskino, Rick James. <laughs> we can keep going. But I'm just saying, Mike, like... Mike, change clothes. Izzo. Mike. 
And that's not even counting what Diesel over here is talking about. Diesel said A Star is Born was originally J. Cole's song. Yeah, there's a like, lot of songs that we could say were originally somebody else's, like um, like uh, uh, Poppin' Tags. That was originally Twisted and Ludacris. You so can look Mike. that up. Feeling so It, Mike. that was originally Camp Lowe's. Uh, so Do Mike. It Again, that was originally Beanie's. I'm just saying. So was Heart of the City, Mike. Heart of the City was originally oh, Beanie's. That's the one, Mike. It is Bean. the one. And, you know. One. Mike, I, Mike, I was just telling you, Mike, you can't tell me that's not Beans. First, the fat boys break up. Now, every day I wake up, somebody got something to say. That's oh, what, Beans, Mike. What about Girls, Girls, Girls? That's Crash Crew. Mike, They're like girl, 83. Mike, <laughs> girls, girls, girls. But, Mike, let's go back to the hook again with the voices. Mike, he picked three of the greatest rap voices of all time to yeah. do the hook. Bismarck, Q-Tip, Slick Rick. Yeah. And did a Crash Crew hook that was, well, it wasn't a hook, but it was just part of a song that was the most yeah. memorable chant part of the song. Right. So this stuff has been going on, but he was in his prime. And so anybody that was calling these things out wasn't paying attention or, or was being called a hater. I was being called a hater. <laughs> but here's what we have now, Mike. Of all the all-time great MCs, nobody else is as collaborative heavy, Mike. No. Nobody else is material. Sounds has dated, Mike, in, in that echelon. It doesn't. These are just these are just true statements, Mike. Well, you know who else is like that? You know who else is like that? And he's not the lyricist that Jay is, but Drake is like that too. And I think that time is gonna do similar things to his catalog. Mike, I said all time great. When I'm talking all time great, I'm talking Rock M, K R S one, Tupac, the notorious B. I. G. Nas. Well Ed Get Lover me. said no I'm just kidding. I don't give up. <laughs> And <laughs> so? Lover said Drake's going to be one of the greatest Shout out to Ed Lover man you know, That's I, true, I Mike. respect everybody's opinion But we got our own opinions around here we, Mike, I can We're big boys and they, girls Mike, Mike sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong I remember when AZ came out with Sugar Hill And Ed Lover and Dr. Dre said This guy's going to be one of the greatest to ever bless the mic They were right that day <laughs> You know yeah. We all have days. I've been wrong. Mike, I gave Port of Miami like four stars. Port of Miami, too, I gave it four stars. Like, we be wrong sometimes. I get it. Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah, no, no, no. It oh, happens. Oh, Rodriguez got a question for us. Rock him hooks? Okay, so, Mike, where I always kind of put Nas and Big, his MCs ahead of Rock him, is kind of right there because the hook writing's not there. And when you hear him doing hooks in 97, it's not as great, Mike. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that guess who's back? Look, I control the crowd. You know why I hold it. Like, he just, but he didn't come from an era, Mike, where hook writing was the thing. It was about the DJ scratching or it's about looping your voice. So those were tools that weren't necessarily needed in the bag yet to be the greatest MC. I think Tupac and, and maybe Chuck D before it is probably one to change that with the hooks. Like, Chuck D's hooks change things, I feel like. I agree. I mean, because even if we look at LL, like Rock the Bells and uh, Bad, yeah. it's yeah. like you say the title of the song and then boom, and then yeah. you come back. Like, and... I need love. It's just, I need love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Repeat, repeat. That's, yeah. that's where they come from. They come from that chant and repeat error because the live show and element is still in effect and in their minds when they're in the booth recording at the time. And I think Chuck D had something to do with the evolution of that process because Chuck D was like, Chuck D was different, Mike. Like, the stuff he was talking about was different, and I think he almost felt like he needed the hook to keep your attention, to keep you on message. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it became a necessity with Chuck to keep your attention. With the other guys, they had the beats and the rhymes where you didn't really need to do that. You know Thanks, what I'm saying? Thanks, Diesel. We missed one. 99 Problems is Ice T. Yes, you're right. I forgot about 99 that. 99 Problems is Ice T. Mike, this is a lot of... This is Mike. a lot. Since so, we talk okay, about so the Mike, hits, so Mike, we're talking no, about the hits. No, But Mike, no other echelon and C has this much swagger jacking going on. Like, like as a matter of fact, no upper echelon and C has any of this swagger jacking going on, Mike. Like, Scarface's style is Scarface's style. Ice Cube style is Ice Cube style. Rock him, rock him. Like people can say Nas bit rock him style. Nas may be an evolution of rock him style more than a bit of copy of it. KRS, Chuck D, Pac, 
Like these are all like such original. Jay doesn't guys. have a better hook than made you look like, that he's ever. No, he rapped. doesn't. Oh my God, Mike! No, you a slave to a page in my rhyme book? No, he doesn't have a hook. I better. mean, let's look at hooks like they shook because ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Scared to death, scared to look. I mean, he's from that era. And so even in the 90s, he don't have hooks like that. He don't have hooks like a cream or something like that. I mean, and again, not saying that's the end all be all per se. But you want to sit here and say nobody can stand next to you on a stage when we're talking about hit records. Well, all of your hit records, first of all, that's false. Most of your hit records on top of that are borrowed from the rest of the game. Don't disrespect the game when you done borrow from the rest of the game. I mean, Mike, Big, Biggie kind of did some of that, too. But that's what I'm saying. Like, A, he did it better. The records are more classic. And and most of those records, Mike, it's big. It's B.I.G., Mike. Like, I think the only, the only all-time great single I think he has where it's a collaborative effort, Mike, is More Money, More Problems. Am I wrong? Like, everything else is really big on the single, isn't it? I don't even really count that as a big song like that. I mean, it is, but I never really think of that. When we think of Big's catalog, More Money, More Problems Wait, doesn't even Mike, cross that, my that, mind. Like, like, when I listen to the track and I listen to Mace's Harlem World, like, it sounds like maybe intended for Mace. But that's what I'm talking about. Big is all time great. Totally made that record his own when he steps on the mic. I mean, like I said, we've heard warning and shit like that. Like you know what I'm you know saying, we've already heard warning. We've already heard juicy. We've heard both versions of one more chance. You know what I mean? Like we've heard hypnotize at this point. We've Mike, you wanna know what and this is what I mean. You know what he doesn't have? And this is what I mean about the voice. Mike, kick in the door, Mike. Where's that type of record at where he's spitting crazy on the verses, but then going crazy on the hook, too? And it got you going crazy because he's just in that zone. Kick in the door, wave in the 4-4. Come on. Terminator 2 says, Mike D, I got uh, Rick Ross's catalog over Jay's. Maybe Nas. I mean, listen, man. Um, I the think that... Catalog, serious. This is what I will say about Rick Ross's catalog. Yes, it's very serious. And the yes. fact that... He went out there and did a versus, held back a whole lot with two chains, and said he got twenty more for anybody else, and he and no one else responded. That says a lot, man. And the Mike. fact that he has his own stuff and he's collaborative. Rick Ross has been able to do it all as an artist, and we're not even sitting here saying anybody's more lyrical than this person, that person. We talking about verses. We're just talking about music, right? And right. so. I think that it's a testament to an artist. And I listen, I, I'm, I'm kind of troubled by the fact that Jay said what he said, but didn't leave an open challenge out. Like he said, he's not doing it, basically. You know what I'm saying? And so that to me means like it's not as foolproof as you're saying it is. Because I expect any artist of his caliber to say that no one can see him. You're supposed to say that. He approaches the mic like that in every right. every instant no, no, but, you're, you're supposed to feel that way when, when you step to the mic but to rick ross like mike when we do these verses like when the verses come out mike i'd say on average i usually pick about 13 to 17 of the songs correctly that the artist is going to play before the verses happen mike when rick ross did his verses i picked like four of the songs correctly he's a whole problem mike I picked like four of the songs right. Like he was pulling stuff out and I was like, oh, you pulling that out? I was like, you want to know it? He about to win with that. I was like, oh shit, like he's a whole problem. Like what, what was it, Mike? I forget. I, I feel like it was Santorini Greece. Did yeah. he play Santorini? I knew you were going to go there, yeah. Like when he played Santorini Greece, I was like, hold on. I was like, we're at this point in the game and he just broke that. I was like, he's not breaking out some of this stuff. I was like, he's a problem. He's okay. not breaking some of this stuff out. He's a problem. He the waited this long to play. Oh, it was like, oh, he's a problem. Okay, well, the people that I have that I think would beat Jay in the verses. You think I, these people would beat him? I think Kanye West could beat Jay Z in the in the verses. Yeah. I think that I think Snoop Dogg with the playlist that he put out there against DMX. I don't think Jay could have beaten that. It's just my opinion. If somebody feels different on that, I get you. He might I, have the best versus playlist though, Mike. Snoop might have the best like playlist set up for this versus because his shit hits hard and their hits and it's classic and you can sing along. It's like actually where he's not super lyrical, 
and that plays well to the crowd and gives him more stadium. Yeah, because we're talking about songs. You know what I'm saying? We're not talking about who's right. the best. Well, we're not battling bitches. up there. I got bitches in the living room getting it on. And when he put the mic out, they ain't till six in the right. 